Hello, and welcome to the Winter Solstice event. Uh, first and foremost, thank you all for coming to this event. We are very, very happy to have you here. This event represents the night compared to the summer solstice event that actually happened exactly six months ago. It is intended to last less than an hour. So if you blink or you go cover biological needs, uh, you will miss something. Uh, we have announcements to do about the network, the products created on top of it, and we even have a one more thing thing that is very, very cool. The event main location is in Gallatin, uh, but you will be able to follow it in Zoom, as some of you are doing already, and we even have a fallback solution for boomers too, so that everyone is invited. That's very important. Now, if you want to dig deeper into anything that is going to be said here, you can head to Gavitan and you can ask the team directly uh, because the team will be, will be already scattered around, around this world. And you can hear it from the mouth of the dragon. So let's begin. And the best way to begin is uh, with some words from Victor Krona, the team leader of Swarm. Hello, Victor. And thank you for coming. So I would like to ask you briefly a couple hey, of questions. Cool. So I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, the first one, they are not very long, so it will, it will not take us, depending on how, how long you want to answer them. It's, 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 they are, they are, they are small. So the first one is around 2021. Okay, what a year. Uh, for Swarm, it meant testnet, it meant mainnet, it meant a token sale. Uh, what, from your point of view, what does it mean for Swarm? And what does it mean for you? Well, for me, it means uh, childbirth. So it's, it, it's basically my, 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 my baby that's long been growing, it's, it's been born. And, and this, is, this is the time for Swarm. And so we really uh, came from vaporware to, to something here. Yeah. Through the, through the main at launch, probably everyone would agree that this is marks this, this, this major milestone. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with this year. That's, that's, that's what a, a, quite an important phase transition in the, in the life of the project. Amazing. And well, I'm looking forward. How do you see 2022 for Swarm? Yeah, 2022 is, is when, when Swarm is expected to become a feature complete in terms of the, the, the underlying layer, the, the, the disk component, the, the, the network protocol that, that basically carries out the, the, the chunk storage. And this is, this, is, this is a complete in terms of uh, the, what, 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 what is part of the vision that uh, storage incentives and, and redistribution uh, for earning potential for, for node operators is going to be in place. And, and some, some other interesting features, which basically complete the, 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 the underlying layer. And from then on, of course, we, we expect some changes. They, they will be just, just small, small protocol changes, I, I guess. And the major features are that, is, that is planned are complete by, by then. This, this is going to be a major, major game changer for, for those that participate as, as operators. Amazing feature complete are really, really uh, big words. So looking forward to it. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go make it happen. Thank you so much, Victor. Okay, so the next, the next topic to cover is something uh, that you well, will be wondering about, which are basically the, the bees, the swarm, the network. Because this is all about creating and launching the network, actually. A very, a very ambitious network. The way I see this network, so my personal view, is a kind of a digital living organism, something really complex to pull out, but whenever you do, it kind of change, changes things. And well, to speak about the network, the, uh, uh, to ask about the, the status of the network and how this network perform today, we have Elad Nagnus, or core ten or core dev track leader. Hello, Elad. Hello, Antonio. Hello, everyone. So, um, 
uh, thank you very much for uh, for the intro. Um, so, for all of you who are watching, so uh, it's been a very exciting year, year for us this last year. Um, with the, well, it's been a, a year of constant learning for us as a team. So uh, we went into this kind of unknown territory of this uh, maintaining a net, main net, a decentralized main net. Um, uh, distributed system, which was a uh, pretty much an uncharted territory for us, uh, operating with uh, real funds and uh, with uh, real hard hardware that people pay for and run every month. So it's been a, a constant uh, um, a learning period for us, uh, which has been great. Um, and um, so, as you all know, the the so. We've had like a lot of ingress of nodes at the beginning when we had the mainnet launch, and then but we've been moving on since and uh, uh, also breaking some some versions, uh, introducing breaking changes. But the idea is that we keep on moving forward as fast as possible, and we uh, we are basically investing a lot of efforts and a lot of time uh, into improving the network experience on the mainnet. So uh, from a kind of a bit of a stuttering uh, experience, maybe six months ago, we are a solid, very predictable uh, user experience these days. Uh, so we've been running a smoke test that I will share with you in a couple of seconds. Um, and uh, we have persistent results and uh, we basically are very happy with the, with the results we've been able to achieve over the last few months. Um, a lot of this was uh, is, uh, basically due to very fruitful cooperation also internally within, uh, within the organization with our research team. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, of course, the devs which are working uh, day and night to move mountains. So um, I would like to express my gratitude to everybody working on this over the last few months and to the uh, incredible efforts that everybody has put into this. Uh, I'll do I'll be very brief and try to share my desktop for a second. So can you see my desk, my, my screen, by the way? Yes, I can. Okay. So these are basically smoke tests that we've been running over the, um, the last, uh, let's say, a, about a month. Um, we also had to kind of like iron out a lot of things, technicalities with, with those smoke tests. But um, we're seeing um, consistent results, basically, of... Uh, so some of the some of the results here are a bit biased, but we're seeing uh, really nice results of uh, anywhere between like half a megabit uh, to two megabits um, per second. Um, sorry, megabytes. And um, um, so I mean, for some of you, maybe that might not seem much, but like. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the actual technical difficulties of uh, what does it actually mean to get something like Swarm with its in, all of its kind of like twists and turns in its architecture, which are really facilitating for a real decentralized storage um, platform for the decentralized web would understand that basically getting such a thing right is an extremely uh, complicated operation. So just to kind of make things um, maybe a bit more um, clear to some of our guests that uh, our architecture is very different to other decentralized storage platforms. And uh, it's, um, it, it's, yeah, so uh, it's, it's much more difficult to get it right. But um, uh, I have very strong confidence uh, and our uh, and our team and our organization to achieve this result and uh, yeah so um, I'm very much looking forward to 2022 uh, with all of its challenges and uh, interesting uh, problems to solve. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been great to see to see to see to see it. Well and. Uh, Thank you. And as you can see, uh, the network is getting better, better and better every day. It's been a uh, constant work since uh, the, for the whole year. But this road, 
it's not easy to travel at all. If it were, so someone would have crossed it already. Uh, in this regard, yeah, like we can say I'll try to uh, there are some challenges both for the network and for the operators. And to speak about those challenges ahead, we have here our research track leader, Rinke. Hello, Rinke. Hi, Antonia. Do you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. All right. is yours. Good. Well, thanks a lot. So, um, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, as Tony already said, my name is Rinke and I'm uh, leading Swarm's research team. And uh, since this is the last um, meeting for Swarm for the year, I thought it would be nice to um, share a bit of uh, my team's new year resolutions with you. And um, our main goal for the upcoming year, for the research team, but as Elot already said, that we'll be working on this uh, with the whole organization, it is to enable Swarm Notor operators to directly earn BCC by storing content. But what do I mean when I say that Swarm node operators directly earn BCC by storing content? And uh, why is this important for you? And also, why is achieving this so difficult? By directly earning BCC for storing content, I mean that you can hook your computer into Swarm, synchronize chunks, and start earning BCC right away. With storage incentives, the system will be upgraded from only earning money indirectly through surfing data, as is already the case right now, to also earning money directly through storing the data. For node operators, this is a very important upgrade because it enables them to earn more BCC and have a more predictable stream of revenue. As a result of this, we expect to see more swarm nodes, meaning more network capacity and improved censorship resistant properties. So why, I see you thinking, doesn't Swarm already have this feature right now, if it is so important? Well, the main reason for this is that it is pretty difficult to design such a system on top of Swarm, preserving all the properties that Swarm has. So to give one example of one such difficulty um, is that in Swarm, each file is split into many pieces, which are spread all over the network. And this enables many of the desirable properties of Swarm. However, for storage incentives, that means that for each file, we need to redistribute the money that is paid in to all the nodes in the network. And then to make it even more complex, these nodes are also ever-changing as they come and go. Um, another reason why it is so hard to implement storage incentives is because incentives are like a double-edged sword. Incentives not only make it beneficial for nodes to behave in a desired way, but they also invariably attract people who attempt to game the system. Swarm, therefore, must be well designed to protect against these malicious actors. And the last reason why it is challenging to design storage incentives is because we are working at the bleeding edge of technology. Swarm combines cryptography, with databases and money. And additionally, all of this in a distributed network where we work under the assumption that no single node can be trusted. We can't lean on a lot of experience here. And this means that we must invest a lot of time and effort into finding the right working methodologies. We are working in uncharted territory on an uncharted problem. I believe that resolving these challenges is important to make Swarm even better than it is right now. And fortunately, we are in a pretty good position to resolve all these problems. The research on storage incentives is already ongoing for a while, and it's progressing at quite a nice pace. As we start to understand exactly what we are dealing with, and we are collecting the materials and developing the tools, which will eventually be combined and yield the solution that we envision and you are hopefully waiting for. I would love to shed more light on this, but unfortunately, um, the event crew decided to cut the time short for the whole event for 45 minutes. So I'm afraid I'm already over time. However, I will be in Gatha Town, so you can ask me your questions over there. Also, I'm on Discord under my username, Agnir, and uh, I will definitely write blog posts uh, on this topic coming up. So you can also uh, catch me there in the reactions, I assume. Um, and with this, 
the only thing that is left for me is to wish everybody a wonderful solstice, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And really, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much, Inke. It's been cool. Okay. Thank you so much for your for your presentation. Uh, as, as he mentioned, you can catch up on, with him on, on Galata. So back to today. Let me introduce one cool little thing uh, now that may solve some of the problems some crypto teams are having in the cryptoverse. Teams like teams that have exchanges that create gains. And I would just say two words. Well, two words and a half. Decentralized front ends. And to speak about this, we have Attila, the track leader of the JavaScript team. Hello, Attila. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Antonio. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. All right, then I will share my screen. Um, let me just, yeah, entire screen. Presentation, I made a presentation about how we um, achieve decentralized front ends and something called bz.link, basically securely hosting dApps and permissionless publishing on Swarm. So um, we had like in the Swarm Foundation, we, we published our roadmap uh, by Lego. And the first milestone was host unstoppable content on Swarm. And that means uploading and downloading content such as website or NFT data. And this functionality can be accessed through all the Swarm products, including B, Gateway, Swarm CLI, Chrome, De Chrome extension, Dashboard, and DJS. And so the JavaScript team is responsible for on this list for everything except for the B client. And we started like working on websites for a long time ago, and we realized that in order to like have uh, unstoppable content on Swarm, we also need to solve one problem regarding the how you access your files. And we imagine like how you, if like in the browser you would have support for Swarm already, your links would look like uh, something on the left. But unfortunately, this is not the case yet. So our links look like something that on the right. And that's not very easy to use. That's not very easy to communicate. And also it has problems with how uh, your, the browser achieves security and also it breaks some assumptions that applications may have. So in order to overcome that, we created a new service that's called bz.link. And with that, the, the links are quite simple and short. And it also like, provides um enough security like um like web two applications does so that to to host your websites on, on top of swarm and then you can see that if you register an ens name then you can use it as a subdomain to busy.link and your resources can be also accessed with the transformation of the link but that's also provided in all the products that we are supporting so this is the, the full spectrum of the, the products that the JS team is working on. And on the left side, you can see that the, on the top, actually, uh, the direction is the ease of use. So like whichever it's in the, more higher, then it means it's easier to use. And something on the, on the right side is, um, gives you more control. And <clears throat> basically, we have the gateway for the easiest use case so that you can just go to the gateway website and try out Swarm without having to install anything. And you can currently, like we added this today, that you can upload your websites on, on the gateway. It's limited. It's only ten, it can be only 10 megabytes. But if your website is less than 10 megabytes, then you can just use that. If you want more than that, then you can use the dashboard and you can run the dashboard with your own B node. And therefore you can, you're not limited in how much data you can upload. And you can also control your own postage stamps that uh, basically define how long your data stays on the network. We also have a Swarm extension, which is a browser extension for Chrome, which also integrates with the dashboard. So you can use the, all the functionality of the dashboard from it, but with your own node. And it also provides um, 
experimental support for bzz.links so that your this bzz.link is normally points to a, a centralized gateway provided by the swarm foundation but if you use the swarm extension it will translate these links to your local b node and therefore you don't need to go through a middleman and then we have also the swarm cli tool which is a cli tool with many features and um, and also we have the javascript libraries that we built all these other products upon and this is the full spectrum and all of these supports this is dot link from today so um, I suggest you to try this out. And if you have more questions, like how to host um, websites on Swarm and how to use the, the, the dashboard, then see you in Gather Town. I will be under the name of Attila Swarm. So you will find me there. That's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Attila. Cool. So now, Let's talk about Metaverse. Uh, Metaverse, which actually was a pretty cool world before, and now it's getting rebranded into Web3, which is also a cool world, but it well, used to be cooler. So, well, we have something ready that may change a little bit how digital scarce assets behave though. And when I talk about digital scarce assets, of course, I'm talking about rocks, Talking about punks, about apes, about lions, and some other herbs. Talking about NFTs. And to speak about NFT tech, we have Voitech, also from the JavaScript team. Hello, Voitech. Hi, Antonio. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, perfect. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm quite excited to talk to you today about. Uh, NFTs, but most importantly about something we called the Developer Integration Initiative. Uh, so I'm a developer myself, and when I build things, I often run into problems or have technical questions. And while most of my problems are solved with Google and Stack Overflow, sometimes they aren't, which leads to developer rage and uh, broken keyboards. So over the past few months, we have started to add developers like me to the grant program to give the grantees technical guidance. And we'd like to extend this to pretty much everyone who integrates Swarm. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you are a large recognized project like Web3.js and you want to update your existing Swarm integration or an individual who spends their evening playing with the technology uh, like Igor, uh, which give me one second because uh, something happened and my computer doesn't want to share my screen. Uh, all right, well, uh, seems like I cannot share my screen. Uh, so I Igar has, built, has uh, built this very cool uh, NFT library called Swarm NFT. Uh, and it makes it very easy to mint, uh, upload to Swarm and publish your NFTs. Uh, so I guess the call to action from today is if you are working on a product that integrates Swarm and you are building some cool stuff, reach out to us. We will do our best to uh, provide you technical guidance. If you have any questions or you want to uh, talk about your project, come and hang out with me in Gathertown after the event. Uh, so that's Voitech. And um, together, let's reduce the development rage and let's save some keyboards. That's, thank you so much, Vojtek. As you can see, we are streaming live. Okay, we don't press the play button. We're, this is all happening in real time. Thank you so much, Vojtek. Okay, so now let's move on to products and things that work on top of Swarm. Uh, whenever I want to explain Swarm to somebody which is, who is not non, uh, non from a technology, well, he's non, non tech. Uh, even if it's not the best analogy, I always say, well, yeah, it's like uh, Dropbox meet Bitcoin. And they kind of get it. Uh, well, there's a product and there's a, uh, it's a Web3 product, which is going in this direction. And uh, the name of this product is, is Fair Drive. And to speak about that, let me introduce Angela, the product manager of Fair Drive. 
Hello, Angela. Hello there. Thanks so much, Antonio. Um, so just a quick refresher, FairDrive is our decentralized storage product, which allows developers to create and build interoperable, decentralized, and open source apps that allow users to reclaim their privacy and own their own data. So all great things. Um, so that said, I'm delighted to share a few updates with all of you as to what we've been working on. Um, efforts have really ramped up on development within FairDrive to add new features in addition to refactoring what was already there. Um, I'm excited to share that we'll be launching the latest version to mainnet uh, by the end of the year, which will have a cohesive brand, a vastly improved user experience, and all around more functionality. So some new things to familiarize yourself with as it relates to FairDrive. Um, I'm going to start specifically with updates in the drive portion itself. Um, so drive, again, the storage component to FairDrive now supports uploading a CSV directly into the pods um, key value store. So this is really exciting because it will allow for queries of the data inside, um, which again, could be a really powerful tool. Um, what goes in can come out. So you can now download files stored in your fair drive in addition to deleting files. Um, searching and sorting has gotten easier. And by easier, um, it exists now. So uh, you can search your fair drive for specific files, DAFs, et cetera, by both name and function. And then we're also giving you five common options on how you want your files sorted um, as you see them in Drive. And then any pod or file can be shared and displayed in a, in a friend's fair drive by selecting the file in pod and then copying a generated share link. So um, I can easily toggle back and forth in my fair drive to see which files I own and which ones I am sharing out. Um, and then there's also a visual icon um, so that you can visually assess what you're sharing and what you're not. Um, next, I wanted to give just a few quick updates on the explore portion of the product. And so this is what I call sort of the DAP marketplace, but it's for the applications that developers have created um, and built that support that interoperability and decentralization. So today we're currently supporting Dracula, which you may or may not be familiar with, but it's the markdown editor DAP that creates the readme files that can be saved directly in FairDrive. Um, we also have consents. So this is a viewer where you can check all the data that you had signed for sharing in a consent receipt. And then we also have a photo viewer. Um, this has been implemented for a while, but it's been updated to more seamlessly open with FairDrive. Um, so there's no longer a clash in the UI, but rather design parity. And then overall improvements have been made so that the viewing um, of images in FairDrive is faster and easier. Um, so this is just a taste of what we have been developing, and we certainly have big plans for 2022, um, perhaps maybe utilizing the Swarm NFT library just to tease a bit. Um, but all that said, I do invite you to join me in GatherTown to take a closer look at some of these key features, um, including a very special look at a meme that I'm saving in my fair drive um, that's in support of an announcement that my colleague Nina will be making shortly. Uh, so I hope to see you in GatherTown, and if you have any additional questions, either GatherTown or I'm Angela V on Discord. And that's it. Thanks, Antonio. Thank you so much, Angela. Pretty cool, right? Okay, moving on. Uh, let me ask you something. From a user perspective, what is a property that will make Web3 solutions flourish, making Web2 solutions obsolete? Well, for, they, for this question, there are multiple answers, okay? There's multiple things that will come to your mind. Uh, you know, privacy, security, a lot of stuff. But there's one key property where Web2 fails miserably. And I've been, I myself have been working in IoT for lots of years, and I've seen this thing in real life. It's, it's, uh, it's really, it's, well. So uh, this property that, made, that Web3 has is called interoperability. And this is a protocol thing. To speak about file interoperability, we have today Chert Athlin and Victor Toch. Hello, Chert. Hello, Antonio. I uh, hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Great, great. So uh, I would say a few words about the Fair Data Protocol and Fair Drive improvement proposals, uh, which are as well as Fair Drive developed under uh, Fair Data Society. So uh, we know interoperability is, is at the core of decentralized ecosystem development. So FairDrive, the apps using it and libraries offer, offered by the Fair Data Society provide the sandbox, sandbox to experiment on. But Fair Data Protocol will make everything more robust, but also bring interoperability to the next level. FairDrive improvement proposals are a way to contribute to the Fair Data Protocol, get your feet wet, maybe by getting involved through Discord, 
So please visit the Liberate Data Tent in Gather Town for more information about this. Ferreta protocol development is starting full swing in 2022, and I invite Victor Thoth to present the roadmap. Hello, everyone. Hello, Victor. We can hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Uh, I'm going to present now. Uh, do you see? Yes. Great. So, as I was introduced, I'm Victor Tot, and uh, you can find me with nickname Nugo on GitHub. Um, that was that was a high demand to to create an ecosystem from our parts towards the battery. Uh, I would like to introduce you the fair data protocol um, that utilizes and interconnects uh, already existing decentralized technologies, such as of course Swarm or uh, Ethereum blockchain in a depth level, and make a consensus on how to properly use those together uh, via improvement proposals. Uh, there are few principles uh, that are working towards uh, that we are working towards in such an ecosystem as you see here. Um, the first one is creating a window into the underlying Web3 file system. Uh, it's more like the user perspective. Then uh, having Web3 storage for devs to connect to and use so for dev developers. Uh, then Organize personal data and allow for access and cross access to it. It means like how the personal data on Web3 will be handled and how the devs can interact with it and access it. And uh, last but not least, how to transform data into information. Uh, as, you, as, as you probably know, Atom's form handles the data in a decentralized peer to peer manner. Uh, but in order to uh, depths use each other's data or even aggregate on it. Uh, we need to reach consensus about data structures and else. For that, we planned already a big roadmap for achieving this, uh, which has six milestones, as you see. Um, the first five milestones, uh, we are the fully functioning uh, Web3 ecosystem on Atom's form. Uh, to mention some, um, this, uh, this one is, it defines a small contract interfaces to uh, register users, depths, uh, or, or data structures on blockchain, and uh, create single sign on battery accounts in browsers that can interact with depths and manage app specific key, key pairs, and eventually uh, drive into the reliable battery services with data economics. Uh, where the user data handling enters into its new era. Um, the fair data protocol will go beyond uh, Ethereum's form and blockchain integrations and libraries with the last planned milestone to integrate other applications into its solutions, uh, such as databases and other peer-to-peer -peer services like, like IPFS. Uh, every idea is manifested first in the form of improvement proposal and that has an exact process how, to, uh, how it can be uh, passed and executed. Uh, you also can contribute with your own idea by creating an improvement proposal and, uh, and share that on, on GitHub. Uh, from proposals, uh, binaries and smart contract interfaces can fall out that the dev developers can use in their uh, product. Uh, you, can, you can see the list here that we planned for Shirley. And, uh, so, so if you if you want to share your thoughts, uh, create improvement proposal, or just want to learn more about the project, scan this uh, QR code here uh, that leads to the GitHub repository of, of FTP. I've also prepared with one demo application, which is related to FedEx uh, protocol. So I invite everyone who is interested in this topic for the demo session as you learn it in, in Gather Town after the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victor. Okay, uh, now let's talk about data. Data that creates our identity in the interwebs. That is what defines us over there in the digital world. And as you, as, aware, as you are aware of, data is being taken away from us. We have some initiatives that will kick start pretty, pretty soon to start uploading data the way it should be uploaded. We call it the great data upload. And to speak about this, 
we have again our Swiss Army knife man, Chert Othley. Thank you, Antonio. Watch out, I can be very sharp. So, uh, the great data upload. So, what is it about? It is providing all of humanity's data on self sovereign decentralized storage. Why? Well, to liberate the data from the silos as they might now reside in and take it to the network of peers instead with all the benefits of decentralization, including self-sovereign storage, not dependent on any cloud provider. We have to start to liberate the data with availability. So uh, putting public data on decentralized storage, fair data society can here provide uh, gateways for Swarm and FarOS to more interested contributors. These gateways can be used to contribute to public data sets and also to contribute more easily to the Galileo mapping initiative. Uh, we invite you here to become a country maintainer and note that building maps on earth is just a stepping stone towards building pieces of the so-called metaverse. So visit the Liberate Data tent in Gathertown for more info. And then I ask you, if data is uploaded to Swarm but no one knows about it, does it exist? Well, um, I didn't finish yet. So, <laughs> so we have to continue with discoverability. And let's start simple. Build a directory of public data on decentralized storage. Let's grow the directory by the community, make it available for indexers, indexers, indexing. Upgrade the technology used for the directory through fair drive improvement proposals and in line with what fair data protocol developments bring about. So again, maybe more info at the tent. Uh, I would also use this opportunity to announce that we started some Gitcoin bounty campaigns to support, so, to support the community efforts. And you can already apply for a couple of bounties related to the availability and discoverability of data. So let's liberate data together and move towards the great data upload. And now I'm finished. Thank you, Antonio. Yeah, let's, let's thank you so much, sir. Okay, that was, that was a cool, cool announcement. Uh, but that's not all. That's not all. We still have a couple of things left. Uh, first, it's announcements time. So let's start with announcements in regards to uh, grants and an accelerator program. For this, we have Tomasz and Robert who will speak about it. Please join Unicorn Hoarders. Where are you? There you are. Thank you, Antonio. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. A big hello to everyone present here. I'm happy to be with you. As Antonio mentioned before, my name is Tomasz and I'm taking care of the grant program. Talking about 2021, there was a growing interest in the grant program and the overwhelming response to our grant waves brought us satisfaction. As I already mentioned, we met a point where we had to satisfy a growing demand for the program and we are still processing the last grant waves. And if anybody here is interested to join uh, the, uh, the Swarm grant team, you are welcome. Uh, we have a real spectrum of different solutions and uh, teams in the program. Projects that are building infrastructure, uh, infrastructure of Swarm, teams that build new economies using NFTs, teams that seek censorship resistant solutions. In a nutshell, the teams are utilizing the powers of Swarm. Uh, later, you, can, uh, you are welcome to check some of them out when you are joining us in the, uh, in the event. Uh, there is a grantee stage there and you can visit and check some of the projects. And now, attention please, drum roll. Uh, we are excited to announce Pura Vida, a new grand wave. Uh, Pura Vida means pure life and is also something that Swarm promotes through Fair Data Society principles. You can find the application form at my.itsform.org. How to grow your project on Swarm uh, or the next step from the grants is the accelerator program. Therefore, I'm passing the mic to Robert, wherever he is. <laughs> In the woods. <laughs> Thank you, Tomash. In the woods. <laughs> yes. uh, I try to keep it to one slide and I'll do that. Uh, let's see. Slide. There we go. Okay, I'm Robert. I'm responsible for the Swarm Accelerator Program, uh, which I'll talk about. Um, it's named Honeycomb, 
And uh, as Swarm itself in the past year, as Tomás already mentioned, we've grown in the amount of attention we've got uh, at the events, at uh, uh, all the outings, at the Fair Day Today, Swarm One event, the Swarm Summer School. Um, so a growth in attention from users, node providers, uh, and as Tomás mentioned, grantees building projects in Swarm. And for that, we have to thank you as a community. And now that we have grown, we'd like to help you grow. And we're, for that, we're opening up the acceleration program. It's called Honeycomb. It starts in uh, April, April 1st. That's not a joke. It's a 10 week program uh, we, uh, with BLTS support, uh, Business Legal Tech Society. For those who remember the summer school program and have visited it, they might recognize the type of workshops and lectures we'll provide and support with implementations as well. For who um, is it meant? If you're a startup, if you're already building on Swarm, if you intend to build on Swarm, or if you're an independent project building your own uh, solution, you're welcome to join us. Why would you? Uh, to bring your product to market. Uh, so once you have your proof of concept, once you have your minimum viable product, and you want to validate it, find your product market fit, or start fundraising, we'll help you uh, get there. How to get there? You can register uh, via this link, my.eatsforum.org slash accelerator. Um, the link that Tomas just mentioned, my.eatsforum.org slash grants uh, goes directly to grant uh, providers. And this one goes directly to the sign-up form for the accelerator program. Early selection starts uh, January 18th. So be sure to be among the first applicants. If you have any further questions about the program, uh, find us on Discord. And I will be at the Gather Town uh, meeting as well, right after this uh, event. And we are providing one spot as a uh, wildcard at a future event. And for that, I'd like to give the word to Mina. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now, uh, and Tomas stole my drum roll, so I'm not gonna do it. But it's now, now it's time for the one more thing moment. And this moment is about drawing a line in the sand, about creating a brighter digital world about collective building. Uh, but it's not me who's gonna speak about it. It's our in-house artist, North Korean tourist. Please welcome Mina Spiegel. Thanks, Antonio. So yes, I am very happy to announce that Swarm is organizing the second Fair Data Society Hackathon in March, starting on March the 1st. It is called We Are Millions because we believe that we are millions in the recognition of a free digital world, a web-free plural universe. So with this open public event, we are preparing a playground for artists, gamers, developers, activists, crypto and non-crypto people that share the values of Fair Data Society to meet, to connect, interact, collaborate, or just hang out together and inspire each other. The participants will hopefully enter the whole event open-minded and exit having forged new ties, ideas, projects, partnerships. There will be interesting debates with sharp speakers to present new views. There will be presentations of promising projects, uh, projects in development, and there will be discussions to spark uh, heated conversations on how we envision the future around web free technologies. Uh, it's also you know, the event uh, to give ideas on what yet has to be developed and to expose potential weaknesses on the way to building a million verses. After the daily online business as unusual section, as we call it, there will also be the so-called afters online and in physical locations spread around Europe, so you'll be able to continue your talks, meet each other in person in a more informal, casual environment, chat over drinks and party together. This is an effort done by the community for the community. We are millions scattered around the globe, so we invite you to step under the Fair Data Society umbrella, get actively involved and join Swarm in building this first of a kind event. The date is set. March 1st to 21st. 
So reach out to us in Gathertown now to explore this adventure further. I'll be there and I hope to see you too. Thank you so much, Mina. Yeah, this we are millions uh, online and it's gonna be, it's gonna be something. Uh, so to conclude, please allow me to give the floor to Gregor, who is uh, in some under some ASCII world. Uh, hello, it's Gregor. The metaverse uh, in construction. Yeah. I'm here at the metaverse construction site. All right. Yeah, just it's one. Like it's like it's the you know it's the transitional world uh, towards our gather town. A oh, cool. So I'm cool. just I'm just waiting Safe to as enter gather town as soon as we finish here. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. It's still it's still eight bits, but it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, floor is yours. Well, nothing, nothing to say except uh, when it's been a year, huh, Antonio? Yeah, it's been a year. I mean, it's been, a year. it's been it's been a ride. It's like when I think about it, it's uh, the this year started first with the first hackathon uh, that we did. Then uh, then we went onto the testnet. There was testnet explosion. Girly went down. Then uh, we worked uh, our way, you know, like uh, towards launching the token, uh, then finalizing the token sale on CoinList with uh, 400,000 people being registered and eventually launching on mainnet. Then facing the adversity of the mainnet, releasing uh, four new releases, doing Swarm Summer School, Galileo, FairDrive. I mean, I probably forgot already something, you know, and as Tomas said, then we have the grantees. They they just take things further. They continue. They give us the input. It's like really really interesting to see like guys like Deplets who are augmenting the web. Uh, Eterna doing the YouTube without the middleman. Uh, Waggle uh, implementing decentralized inboxes. Envelope working on unstoppable NFTs. This is something to check out also in the Gather Town how Swarm can truly make unstoppable NFTs. And not just that, by the way, it can also make dynamic NFTs that work excellent with uh, oh, oracles. So, uh, and, cool. you know, like projects like Nectar, which is essentially first DeFi project uh, on top of Swarm, uh, exploring uh, what additional crypto economics and incentives in the ecosystem can come to fruition and actually enable products for enterprise. So, yeah, it's been a lot. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah probably yeah. nothing right yeah yeah <laughs> probably nothing like you said you know so it's uh and this you know it's like now when it's end of the year i i look back and i mean all these things that i mentioned it doesn't take a mad genius to figure out that only we can do this through collaboration of that course. only that only uh as a team as a team we can do this and um yes I'm really grateful to the team. It's been an amazing ride. Uh, the team did amazing job. So yeah, it's been Definitely. a hell of a year. Yeah, It's been a hell of a year. And yeah. what's what's up for us in 2022? Well, you know, it's like as much as it was exciting this year, mm -hmm. I think we have some, uh, some more things in store for the next year because uh, now our pieces are coming together and we, we see, you know, like the car has left the garage. You know, like we now put higher gear, like uh, Church said, uh, the liberate data efforts, uh, putting humanities data on Swarm. It's uh, Rinke announced uh, new incentives. So this should enable, I would say, emergence of, of uh, decentral first decentralized service networks and additional uh, reward possibilities for the node operators. Then uh, it's, um, I think we will see, in my, in my opinion, the emergence of a bunch of purpose-driven communities. And um, this, I believe, uh, these communities will be organized as DAOs. So I think it's going to be very exciting to see how Swarm can uh, grow with DAOs and be more like a DAO and at the same time support DAOs. And this all fits our, this grand topic of empowering digital freedom. So, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting year. Looking very much ahead. Yeah, looking forward. Thank you so much, Gregor. Thank you so much for your for your coming. Thank you, thank you, and uh, let's let's continue in Gather Town. Yeah, of course. Bye bye. See you. Okay, everyone. 
So this has been our short and packed event. Um, and we're so happy to have you here. Don't forget to join us over there in Gathertown uh, for some, some, some more time, where you will, will be able not only to speak with us, but to play to an oldie shooter, mm -hmm. listen to music through a classic MP3, MP, MP3 player, and collect an NFT that may open gates eventually, maybe somewhere in the future. Let's see. Uh, that was it. So, and if I don't see you afterwards, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you so much.